Hey everybody, today we're going to be talking about a way to use our MIDI effects more tightly integrated in with the new step sequencer. Now that you've had a chance to really use the step sequencer for a few weeks, it's time to look at how some of these other tools that we've already had for a long time fit in with the same ecosystem. And we're going to look at something which probably a lot of you haven't even considered yet, which is using a lot of the same length of sequences that we have in the step sequencer, but in some of our MIDI effects like the modulator and the envelope tool, etc. So let's dive in. Let's look at some of these ways that they're really tightly integrated or can be if you just set up a couple things in the right way. Okay, so I'm just messing around a little bit with two different modulators as a part of this pattern here. So we're in the, let's close all of our plugins for a second. We are in the drum machine designer. And as a part of that, we have it attached to the step sequencer. So I have a basic pattern here, kick, snare, hi-hat close when a little bit of it opened. And so I was working on just the hi-hat here for a second. So here's the, the concept that we're looking at. We have this four bar loop and I want to have some other effects which perfectly coincide with that loop. And we could do that here with the kick as well. So let's try that for a second. So we can't put MIDI effects on the drum machine designer overall track, that's fine. But we can do them on the individual tracks. So I'm going to put a modulator here, and I'm going to close the other ones for now, just so we don't get them confused. And so I can start by slowing this down the rate to four bars. And you can see now it's going to do the same sawtooth type form, well it's a triangle form, throughout that whole four bars. Starts in the middle, it'll go up and down and back up across four bars perfectly lining up with that kick. We could change the shape if we want to, and most of the time, not a lot happens down in the lower part. It's gonna essentially sound like it's turned off. So we're going to reduce the output level so that it's a much shallower curve, and then we'll raise that up into the usable space up here. Okay, so now that's the basic concept for how we set up the modulator for this. Let's now assign it to something on the actual kick. Most of these in this particular preset are quick samplers, which is cool. We have pitch and filter and amplitude, plus we have some other things over here. Um, what we want to do perhaps in this case is have that kick change a little bit with the filter. So I'm gonna to come to the destination for the modulator. We're gonna say learn and learn plugin parameter. And actually we'll do the drive and just have the drive going up and down a little bit. We may actually with the drive want more of a variety here. So it's gonna go down and then back up there just a little bit. Okay, let's hear this. I wanted it lower. Now, that ties it up perfectly. That means the exact same uh, step sequencer is going to repeat with this exact same effect on it every time. Now, we can, if we want to, do it in twice as fast or twice the speed by making it two bars. It's still going to line up every fourth bar or every at the end of every fourth bar it'll start at the same place because it's still a perfect division. So 
So you're hearing the kick change over time. We had essentially the same thing happening here uh, with our hi-hat. I keep on scrolling right past it. Right here. So I had one modulator on this one doing that filter sweep over the full four bars. And then I also threw on this one here for the hi-hat. So this one is definitely a little bit different. It's really jumping through there. And that one is controlling, let me open up the quick sampler. It's controlling the pitch, coarse pitch of the hi-hat. So it's actually flipping through a bunch of different pitches there. So what's the point? Well, the point is, is that we can take this looping percussion track here and we can add a little bit of different variety to it and we can do it in a way that's easier than just programming every single one of these. It applies to pretty much everything on this track. So later on, if we want, we can actually, you know, add a different step sequence and the same effect will be on there until we mute it or turn it off. We can automate those to turn on and off. But this gives us just more creative control over our sounds, still sticking within the same pattern length without having to do a lot of extra work. I mean, setting up the length of our modulator is super easy and it can be very powerful. Let's look at another example here. In this case, let's find one of the longer uh, cymbal hits here. Let's close that one down for a second. So we have our hi-hat, snare. Okay, so there are some more in here. Kit pieces, let's do the ride, add that on. Okay, so this is another one, it's held out long, so this actually works. Let's try this in our pattern. So I don't like it there, I wanna start at the beginning. And now, I don't, it doesn't really fit at all here. This is more of like a one-time element at some point, or we change the envelope on it, which we could do uh, right here, but we're going to actually come through with that ride. And uh, let's see, you'll find it up here. Right there. Let's add our modulator. And in this case, we're going to do two different things to this. One of them is going to be uh, this uh, square wave shape. And we'll do it at a fast tempo, like really fast, 30 second notes. Let's load up the sampler. And in this case, we're going to learn plug-in parameter and learn the volume. So now, so see the output level here, how if I move this up and down, it's going to create a cool effect there. It'll build in and out. Well, let's actually add, let's pull this down one because we need to put the first modulator above it. We'll open up both of them. And now I want to, let's see. We could either do this through an envelope or we could do it here through um, one of the other shapes. So let's try this with the envelope first. So I'm going to say learn plug-in parameter. In this case, we're going to do the output level. And we'll have it do a single at first. I want to see how this works. 
So the attack is going to be two bars. We're going to hold for one bar and release is going to be one bar. So two bar, one bar, one bar. That equals four, just in case you were wondering why I was doing that. And now we could either do multi or single, but that's going to trigger every time that the step sequencer triggers it. So instead of that, we can actually trigger this off of the LFO. And we don't actually need to assign it to anything here. We're just going to use the rate now to make that assignment. So for instance, right now, if I were to push play, it'll come up, but you'll see it'll restart every time that hits. And that doesn't do enough for us. So we're going to say trigger off the LFO. And we want to come through here and turn on the LFO. And you can see we have it set to a half a note right there. So that's going to start pretty quick and it doesn't line up with everything. So we could just say at the very fastest amount, which essentially restarts it every single time it hits the bottom. Or one of my favorites is to overlap this a little bit and have two bars where nothing happens in between. So now you'll see the envelope goes down. There we go. It's finally on the right cycle. There's the two bars of nothing. We could even do four bars and go every other time. Here we go. Let's start from the beginning. Then it starts after the initial four bars. And now if we want, we can make this get even louder by turning on or turning up the output level for this. So it'll go the first four bars. And then when it builds, it's going to build all the way up. So some middle ground maybe. So what we're doing is creating this variety inside the beat using the modulator. Let's actually go up to 64th notes. Give it a shimmer. Hundred twenty-eight. Let's pull the level up. This will be our last experiment and then we'll pull the plug. Okay, so you get the idea. Now the job is to make this sound musical, which, you know, it has a lot of potential here, but we need to figure out how that fits in with everything else going on. Maybe it really makes sense to do the 16th notes or the 32nd notes instead of the 128th notes. But now you see how you can delay the envelope, have it being triggered off of the LFO so that it comes in every other pattern or every fourth pattern or whatever. Now you can have all of that control over how that's going to actually work with the LFO. And then that's triggering the other modulator. Okay, a lot to wrap your brain around. I hope this made sense. All of this works so nicely with this step sequencer. And that's just because we're looking at fixed amount of time for each pattern. And the modulator works just right in that same vein with the fixed amount of times. So you can actually just build off each other, build on top of each other, and just create really cool patterns. You can actually, if you want, set them separately so that one of them is a four bar and the other one's like a three bar so that you're always getting a different combination as it goes throughout the whole section of your song. Okay, that's it for today. Hope you enjoyed this and we'll be doing more with the step sequencer this week. I want to start diving in a little bit deeper with it.